Hi, I'm Nandini from Google's Conversation Design Team, here to give you some tips on how to design your own voice and chat UIs using Actions on Google. Before we dive in, let's have a conversation about conversation. Consider this. All human inventions start as ideas. By definition, conversation is the exchange of ideas by spoken words. And by definition, civilization is the most advanced stage of human social development. It's the tangible expression of our common understanding and values, which is expressed through language. And language is molded and refined by conversations. A conversation is a contract between two participants with a mutual investment in the outcome. But all of that is really hard to codify. Building natural human to computer conversations is hard. But that's because human to human conversations are only deceptively easy. People are not going to change how they converse anytime soon. So the key to closing that gap between modern interfaces and thousands of years of evolution is to use what we know to be true about human to human conversation to teach our computers to talk to humans and not the other way around. So the key to building a good voice interface is not to fall into the trap of simply converting a GUI into a VUI. Obviously, I can't teach you an entire design discipline in a few minutes, but I can give you five pro tips to set you up for success. Let's design a simple number guessing game along the way. Here we go. Number one, leverage your brand and give yourself a persona. I don't mean a caricature or mascot necessarily, but you can do that too to make it even more accessible. A persona is more than that. It's the consistent character captured by the voice and interactive experience. It's the face of that experience for the user. First, list the core attributes of your brand and what you stand for. Come up with the corresponding attributes that can be conveyed through design elements and, of course, the voice dialogue itself. For example, if your brand is known for speed, something we at Google are known for, some attributes of the design might be to be intuitive and data-driven, since both of those elements cut out steps for the user. Some voice attributes for the actual dialogue wording might be engaging or apt or approachable, since those also tighten up the dialogue by removing ambiguity or making it easier for the user to have confidence in the interaction. Write a short style guide covering things like pace, tone, energy level, vocal attributes, and the overall impression that you're shooting for. Try to create a simple bio sketch of a character that might embody all of these attributes. Give it a name if you want. Also, there's a practical reason for creating a persona as well. It's a good grounding mechanism for you long term. Designers and developers will come and go, or multiple people could work on it at once. It'll give everyone something to fall back on for consistency. Finally, don't forget to identify yourself as a separate entity from the Google Assistant. That means greet the user. Number two, think outside the box, literally. It's tempting to draw out a conversation path visually and plug in the dialogue and then dive right into the code or start stringing together blocks of context to write a working agent and then back into the experience iteratively. We don't recommend this. You can, but I promise you it'll save time and give you a much richer experience to map out the core conversation paths ahead of time. This doesn't mean just the so-called happy path. It doesn't mean error paths either. Instead, write out your core experiences like you would a screenplay. This can be as scrappy as acting it out and documenting it on paper, or create an interactive prototype you tweak and play with until you're ready to start coding. And then, when you draw out your initial vision, keep it at a high level, where the boxes present entire dialogues or user intents, but leave out the individual wording you'll use in the interaction. Number three, context. Here are just some types of context you can consider and infuse into a conversation to make it more meaningful. Where is the user? What are they doing? What type of device are they interacting on? How is the experience influenced over time? Where is the user's frame of mind in relation to what they're trying to do? Try to cater to their intent, not to a specific feature. Number four, speech recognition technology isn't perfect, but it's getting better all the time. So for the most part, you might want to treat that as a black box that'll continue to improve. You have to, of course, be aware of its limitations, but try to step back and look at the interaction from the user's perspective when something goes wrong. 
You don't have to try to steer the user back to the original question if they don't get recognized immediately. There are so many reasons they might not have been. People hardly ever say nonsense. Try to take those so-called errors and make them into another meaningful turn in the dialogue. Finally, I leave you with a challenge. This new world of conversation design for machines opens up a great deal of opportunity that hasn't existed before for us to use technology to advance our lives. Sure, as you get started, create some games, but I urge you to think bigger eventually. Help give someone access to information or technology that they couldn't use before because of a physical, mental, or an economic disadvantage. We're excited to help you do that with Actions on Google. Check out the description for some resources, and we can't wait to see what you create.